Welcome every yeah, I'm eating ramen. <laughs> Welcome everybody to Apocalypse Otaku. <laughs> Otaku girl. Da da da. Eating ramen. <laughs> Yeah. Very much. Let's go! I saw like the last half of that episode. <laughs> Instead of enter the wild side, enter the wild card. <laughs> It was back again. Sometimes. He only made his appearance, what, maybe on season two or three? And then appeared maybe a couple seasons after that? Ring of fire. <laughs> <laughs> Bet it was either Jenny or Nicole. 
or can. Ah, I called it. Love that song. I feel like the orca might be like a football player or something. Or someone that has, I don't know, I, I saw the clue package. For some reason, I'm thinking Piglet because he was on the, it sounded like he was on The Bachelor before. I'm thinking like, so is this someone that has been on The Bachelor before? Because there were a lot of, like, clues to, like, roses and stuff. And I'm thinking, is this someone that's been on The Bachelor before? I don't know. Love that song, too. <laughs> He was in the Spy Kids movies. Wow. He was, um, Danny Trejo. Uh, he was, he starred in Spy Kids, like, all three movies that were around, like, in 2005, 2006. He played Uncle Machete. <laughs> I'll try not to. Not too far. Extra. What? Was there something on your screen? A 
month. Basically, you'd be paying, yeah, basically you're paying $26 a month. Pretty much. You're paying, so with Disney Plus being just $6.99, but then if you want Premier Access for all the stuff that's coming out on Disney Plus, you're paying $20 a month on top of your 6 So basically... Ouch. I'd rather just wait until it actually goes on Disney Plus. Trying to save money as it is. Since they're opening back up. <laughs> <laughs> How's it spelled? Let's hope they don't move. Mm-hmm. 
Yes. Does mother knoweth you wear her drapes? <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> what? Oh my. <laughs> now I really want to see that. Did it cut off? <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> No way. <laughs> nice. I said nice. Sweet. Bugs. Digital. Mm. Mm. Might have to invest in that. Go. <laughs> <laughs> 
No, 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 no. No. No Shakespeare. Mm -hmm. What? <laughs> The entire of the line. I only, uh, I only know at least like two parts of Romeo and Juliet. Like when Juliet saying, "Romeo, Romeo, wherefore art thou, Romeo?" And then um, Romeo's part, like yet soft, through light through yonder window breaks, tis the east. And Juliet is the son of the, like, yeah, that's probably the only two lines that I know from Shakespeare. And I never even read the thing. got everybody's manga releases for this week so basically yeah it's this week next week actually what's today no you're good what's the today's the 28th right so we actually got a bit for tuesday and i think i already read these so i don't need to worry about it then at least i don't think so huh? wait yeah yeah i've read all these all right so we'll just move on to next week <laughs> <laughs> My brain's not working. Uh, I'm fried from work today. Bear with me, everybody. So, we're going to start with next. Nah, you're good. Um, so, on the 29th, which will literally... So, literally, the tomorrow, we got a couple of UK DVD releases for the UK. So, of course, starting it off, Dragon Ball Z Season 5. You can get it on Blu-ray. Um, then we... Yeah. <laughs> Yay. Uh, then we have Fairy Tale: The Final Season Part 26. You can either get it on Blu-ray or DVD. You can get one or the other. Or both. Then we have Fate Stay Night. Unlimited Blade Works Collection Collector's Edition Blu-ray, and then Golden Kamui um, Season 2. You can either get it on Blu-ray or DVD. So that will be literally all the re DVD releases for the UK tomorrow. So, for all of our UK fans, those are for you. And then, on... Yes. We recommend it. Uh, then also on Tuesday the 30th, we got, again, more manga for the U.S. So this is going to be very interesting because some of these titles are probably very funny or just barely odd. But again, we're all odd, but these titles are probably even odder than we are. So on with it. Yep. 86, Volume 7. B B L Met Metamorph Metamorph 
Metamorphosis, oh, Metamorphosis Volume 4. I was having a hard time, time pronouncing that word. I think I already know what the BL means. <laughs> I already know what it means. Um, the title that I just read, it says BL, and I already know what the BL stands for for that. Yeah. Um, Bofuri, I don't want to get hurt, so I maxed out my defense, volume one. Um, drugstore in another world, the slow life of a cheat pharmacist? <laughs> now, I've heard of restaurant in another world, but drugstore? <laughs> uh, yeah, oy vey is right. Um... Next we have Ghostly Things, Volume 3, Grimgar of Fantasy and Ash, Volume 14.5, so it's half a novel. Okay. Yep. High Rise Invasions, Volumes 17 and 18. About High Rise Invasion? Hmm. At least it's a good thing, but not bad thing. Things are on that Okay, yeah. <laughs> um, Himoto Amaru Chan, Volume G1. Basically, it's Volume 13. I don't know why they put G1. That's weird. Yeah. How to Treat Magical Beast, Mine and Master's Medical Journey, Volume 5. I was a bottom tier Vera uh, Buracura Buracura? I don't even know how that word is pronounced, but I think it's a. Uh, I don't know, it's not Bill Track. I don't know why I think it's Bill Track. That's pirate way of jump. Um, uh, not very either. <laughs> but a bear, a bear, a bear crew rat for 1,500 years. It's spelled B U R E A U C R A T. No, because bear tuna doesn't have a in it. Does it? Yeah. Maybe they're silent, I don't know. Um, they're not? Oh. But whatever it is, it says for <laughs> 1,500 years and the Demon King made me a minister. And it's a light novel, so it's the first one of this series. If any of you guys know how this title is pronounced, go on to Otaku, Otaku Calendar and let us know in the comment section because we don't know how to pronounce this word. Uh, you're fine. Um, let's see. King... Oh, wait, no. That's that part. <laughs> that's part of the first title. Um, Love and Heart, Volume 1. Made in Abyss. Volume 9. Mrs. Kobayashi's Dragon Maid. Volume 10. Lucio Q. Tensai. Jobless Reincarnation. Volume 9. My Boy. Volume 7. Precautious Woman Executive. Miss Black General. Volume 6. Okay. Now, it's been a while since we heard this series before. Roll Over and Die. I will fight for an ordinary life, life with my love, with my love, and cursed sword, volume one. 
<laughs> We've heard that title before, before. Roll over and die. <laughs> <laughs> uh, man. Uh, okay, okay, then we got Sayonara Football 4. The hero is overpowered but overly cautious, Volume 6. Very. Second half of the first season of JoJo. Oh, the second season. Oh, right. <laughs> mm -hmm. Watch out, water! The last two, uh, Yokohama Station SF, and then Yuna in the Haunted Hot Springs, Volume 13. So those are all of your manga and DVD releases, literally heading into the last leg of March. We are literally almost out of March. That is crazy. Snow White that was released by Disney like some odd years ago. Are you kidding? They're showing that? You know how old that movie is? Uh, play it on the projector. Woo. Okay. Alright. So... <laughs> like you're coming with me. You don't have a choice. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that was nice. tomorrow and Tuesday. Mm -hmm. So I'll leave those alone. But we know one thing. Once March ends, April comes. And guess who's first? Literally on April 1st. <laughs> but it wasn't a joke. <laughs> Oh, no. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, I 
a man we want to interview, among others. So bad. Yeah. We will! And there are tons of voice actor and actress birthdays in April. That's crazy. And then, like, it's scattered throughout the rest of the months, so... I believe that. Must be a family, uh, trait or something. Yeah, it's a family thing. Yep. So what is next? Here, I'll, I'll, then I'll read it since I got it on my phone. So it's not letting you scroll, is that it? Alright. Mm -hmm. Thirdly coming up tonight! Disney Plus. chance to watch it. I gotta record it. I know, I gotta, I'm gonna put it on my DVR, um, when it's on Saturday, so I'll do that. 
Yeah, and Mugen Train's gonna be coming here in April. Get ready! Oh, 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 I can't wait. Yes. Yeah. But the thing is, who are they going to have um, to replace um, John Witherspoon as Grant? That's the question. He's played that role for so many years. Well, at least as long as the Boondocks have had their seasons. So. what Founding in the Comics has for news. And, there we go. Yes. Exactly. Because not a lot, I'm going to say not a lot, you know, some, there are some girls out there that actually like anime. And it's not a shit, and ladies, if you're watching, there is no shame in liking anime. You know, the guys always fantasize about the anime girls, that's their waifu. You can have a husbando, or five. So... You know, that's a thing. It's not just guy neutral. It's wi it's gender neutral. Both men and women like anime. So, don't be ashamed if you like anime. Because anime is really br- Exactly. And also, we have also interviewed several voice actors throughout the span of our lovely little show. It's hard to reach, yes, it's hard to reach some of these ladies, but we are not giving up. We are not giving up on you ladies. But we love the guys, too. Wendy Powell, Laura Bailey, Kaylee Glass, Melalee. Yes, so many, so many women that have done anime for eons, and yet they're st yes, and still doing, and still doing. We will, we are willing to work with you, ladies, and we would love to chat with you about your anime careers as a voice actress that have brought that has bring so many characters to life. And also that you felt a part of you while voicing these characters. The, the men have voiced their opinions on what characters they are closest with. And speaking of John Gurnion <laughs> and Blake Shepard, they are now in a new anime series through Sentai Works called Hero Equal Slash Mask. And we... We, so I took the liberty upon myself to ask Mr. Gremion if his character either had a mustache or an accent, I would watch it. And I'm still going to watch it. I was just being jokeful, but he said sadly, he said sadly neither. Nor is it a multicolored bear. 
singing Baby Got Back. I'm thinking, oh my god. Like, he's still on that? He's still on that! <laughs> he's... <laughs> There's another... <laughs> No! <laughs> no! He's still not over the fact that we mentioned the second time that we talked to him, which was last year, that Sarah Palin, who was on, I believe it was season three or season four. No, no, no. She was on season three. She was on season three. She was a multicolored bear that was pink and purple. And sang the entire rap. She sang the entire song. It did not miss a single lyric. And we showed, we told John Grevion about it. Once he saw that, <laughs> he is still on that trip saying, I cannot unsee this. And literally replied, the multicolored bear sticky baby got back. No. Very true. <laughs> I thought he'd get over it by now. <laughs> but nope. He's not over it. He's not over it by a long time. Oh, man. Let's go! <laughs> hmm. Asteroid in love. Okay. Yeah. Watch way more anime. in the sci-fi network. Before there was a DVR, there was a VCR. <laughs> Nice. 
<laughs> That's a mouthful. Oh boy, more politics in anime. Come on! How many times do we have to say anime and politics do not mix? I used to watch Country Roll. To the Sony owned. show Ace getting a hole punch through his chest where the world should potentially kill it. That's not right.
they're not wrong. I didn't, yeah, I didn't know that either. Most anime is targeted towards a younger demographic, like preteens and teenagers. Sure, they have some enemies that are designed for kids too, but no way, shape, or form should it be just targeted for adults. Sure, there are some adult-themed animes out there, but that's why they have TV ratings on some of their stuff. Some of the stuff that was on Crunchyroll, the only thing I've really watched was Free, which was streaming on Crunchyroll, and then uh, the first season of Food Wars I watched for a little bit, but other than that, I don't even really watch Crunchyroll anymore. So. stick with DVDs and Netflix.
you know, every, everybody's, you know, got their choices on how they watch certain shows and, you know, how they spend their money. So everybody's, everybody's different. But <laughs> the first article I had to read, so this was literally posted today. It says, television channel in Spain's Venezuela, uh, Val, Valencia region, refuses to air Dragon Ball due to laws prohibiting content that encourage gender discrimination through stereotypes and sexist rules. Oh boy. <laughs> this should be interesting. So let's see. So Dragon Ball has officially been rejected from broadcasting by a television channel in Spain, Venice, Venezuela, Valencia. Ooh. Okay, Valencia's region with a re, um, re, re representative, yeah, representative for the channel explaining that the decision has been made, made been in consideration of local gender legalization uh, legislation that prohibits the airing of content that encourage that encourages gender discreet discrimination through stereotypes and sexist roles. It says earlier this month, following a vocal fan campaign requesting that the requesting <laughs> requesting that the requesting okay that the government-owned television channel Afatun Air, the series Valencia Department of Comprimis Monica, Monica Alvero asked whether the general dictory, dictory, directory I think I said that right Directory of the Sociedad Ana Mia de Medios de Comunicación plan to incorporate into the religional channel Aputa the drawings of Bola del Drac in Valencia. I hope I'm saying these right. My Spanish is not good. <laughs> it's it's not it's not up to par at all. Um, on March twenty third, Alvaro received the answer to her query as Apunta Media General Manage Management Alfred Costa informed the Venezuelan um, Valencian Radio and Television Com Commission that the channel will not broadcast Dragon Ball Z due to both the series' high cost of licensing and the region's regulations regarding gender equality in children's programming. That's not a bad move on their part, though. Because when you think about it, it is kind of like that. You know, with sexist roles and a bit of gender discrimination. So that was a good move on their part when you think about it. Mm -hmm. Finally, some good politics when it involves anime and not something stupid. <laughs> Sony and Crunchyroll. Mm hmm. Pixar. 
to Article 5 of Law 6 last 2016 of the General Ta Generalita Venezuelan uh, Valencia Valencian Venezuela <laughs> No, not Venezuela. Why am I thinking Venezuela? <laughs> Valencia Valencia the religion's government governing institution television network must adopt through self-regulation codes of conduct aimed at transmitting the principle of equality including sexist content especially in children's and youth programming the generalist style valencians um, also stated that the public media should feature equal treatment and opportunities for men and women, the use of non-sexist language, and the guarantee of a per plural and non-plural image stereotypes of women and men. Mm, that's a good law. And you don't really see any of the women really buying. It's always the guys. Well, except for Android 18. A Android 18. She's the only one that fights. And then, yeah, and then there's another one that's later on in the Dragon Ball series, but um, she fights, but... Yeah. Mm -hmm. Tarua, I think that's her name. Tarua, I think that's um Gohan's um uh, daughter. I can't remember. Yeah. <laughs> Tarua. <laughs> I I can't remember the name, but I think I think that was it, but I can't remember. Um, let's see. So the document also allows a specialized professional intervention in the field of equality and the establishment of filters and guarantees for the rejection of sexist with a special attention to those aimed at children and youth both in programs and in advertising with collaboration of the observatory of non-sexist advertising of the generalist valencians in further calls for broadcasting to disregard the content that encourages gender discrimination through stereotypes and roles sexist, despite the belief that Dragon Ball promotes sexism and gender discrimination in a series featuring of all characters, Luna, without whom Earth and the universe at large would have been destroyed a dozen times over, neither the... <laughs> Balma. Why did I say Bluma? <laughs> Balma, yeah. Um, neither the Valencian government nor APUN media have uh, provided any specific intentions of such content to support... Why did it move on me? <laughs> um, yeah. It only did, if this is the first time it's done it to me. Um, let's see, provided any specific intentions of such content to support their rejection of the series from broadcasting. As noted by, I don't know why I was thinking Costco, but it says Costa. <laughs> no, it's spelled like Costco! I'm thinking, wait, it says Costa, not Costco. Costco. Again, I told you, my brain does not want to work today. I've worked too hard this week. <laughs> it says, 
by Costa and evidenced by his physical presentation of several Dragon Ball DVDs during his appearance before the Valencian Radio and Television Commission through the series will not be aired on television. It will still be available to Valencian fans on home media. Dragon Ball was pre- Yeah, instead of broadcasting it, so... Which kind of makes sense. That's it. Okay, Dragon Ball has previously had previously broadcast within the region in the 1990s, at which time is televented, uh, yeah, televented a prominent fan base as seen in a vocal support the classic anime still enjoyed throughout Valencia to this day. As of writing, it's unknown whether a boon Hence, um, refusal to air Dragon Ball Z only concerns the original series, or if it extends to Z, GT, and Super. So, they're just not showing the stuff that happened in the original series, like, like, when it first started. I think they're just counting it for just that right now. And of course, the ending question is, what do you want the Valencia's refusal to air Dragon Ball Z? What do you make of the Valencia's refusal to air Dragon Ball Z on television? Yeah. No, it's their government. <laughs> they choose what they want. Yeah, I don't either. It would be nice to visit. Don't plan on living there, though. I wouldn't be able to understand a darn thing. <laughs> Very true. I can't, I can't even speak that good of Spanish. I know several words in Spanish, but not to communicate a full-fledged sentence. So yeah, I'd be lost. I just know, no, all I know is, I know, hola, adios, um, how are you, which is como estas, I know how to say, I know how to say happy birthday in Spanish, um, uh, I think that's about it. Okay, that means you don't, maybe they make me young again, okay, okay. Contagious. It's proven by science. It is. And since there, you, you got something else you wanted to read, or do you want me to keep going? Oh, we're on the same thing then. <laughs> uh huh. No way. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. I know, but hey, we gotta bring it up because My Hero Academia is back with season five. It's got it. We gotta read about it. It's anime related. Oh, well. 
Let's not that far down. They only posted what they I got March 27th for the movie. Oh, the other one? success of the series' first two films, Two Heroes and Heroes Rising. The popular anime series has officially licensed the first preview trailer for UA High School Class 1A's return to the silver screen. I still have yet to watch the first two, so the third one will just have to wait. You saw the second one? already? <laughs> okay, now I gotta make friends and watch it. I know Johnny Young Bosch was in the second uh, My Hero Academia movie as the villain. Yes. <laughs> Again, I don't have time. I got a lot of junk up here. <laughs> you have more free time than I do! Because he's being framed for mass murder. Very true. Mm. Let's see. Though the preview, the blue, the blue, <laughs> the blue little else about the film's overall plot. It did end with the announcement that My Hero Academia World Heroes Mission will be released in J Japanese theaters on August 6th of this year. So that's gonna be fun. Good for them. <laughs> yep, so everybody in Japan gets to enjoy My Hero. Woo! Okay, so we know about that. And right, what else do they have with anything that's on here for the time? Mm -hmm. Oh, they have the five greatest fights in the Mind Hero Academia anime so far, and that was back on the 25th. And so we're not reading that. Alright, let's go ahead and do that. Gotta grab the board, and then it's on the bed. Okay. So, for those of you who are just knowing about this, 
or have not been following our show thus far, we are, we have made another battle. Yes. It is old heroes versus new heroes. We, yeah, I got the old guys. <laughs> well, they're not that old. So what side are we starting with first? Are we starting with the new guys or the old guys? <laughs> Alright, we'll start with your side first. I kind of go in order on um, the polls that I go with, so I'm going to go ahead and just start with the first one. So, posted this seven days ago, literally after when we started this. So, we're going to start with Natsu Dragnail from Fairy Tale taking on Bond from the Seven Deadly Sins. Now... Yeah, I'm going with your side first, because that's how I went in order. I started with your side first, and then I went with mine. I don't go out of order like that. Yeah, I'm weird. <laughs> I'm weird. I'm very, very weird. So, about 34 votes were cast. 10 people liked it. And we have two comments. Yay, we got comments. Yay. So, the... The first one is from Hydellus. We have not heard from her in a while, which was nice. She said, of course, it looks like she's siding with Natsu, saying Natsu's not touching Bond. More like she's siding with Bond with this one. So, and then Magician wrote Bond Mags. I don't know how that works. I don't know if he's saying that he that he lags, or, I don't know. Maybe he was trying to put lags, and then it just said nags. I don't know how that went. Okay. All right. Vaughn, 47.1. Maxi Dragmail, 52.9. To a dragon slayer with motion sickness. <laughs> Todd, Todd is literally just posting on Instagram like nobody's business. Have you seen that man's hair? He's starting to look like Keanu Reeves. But the Asian version, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know either. I really do not know. But he's maybe he's trying to work up on his next cosplay and trying to be an older version of Natsu. Who knows? Again, we don't know. It's Todd. He he's a mystery to everybody. <laughs> I barked back. <laughs> Puppy. Okay. Next on our battle is the very quirky, yet educational, and very out there and not normal. Literally, he's an octopus and he's wearing a graduation outfit 24-7. We're talking about Carl Sensei from Assassination Classroom taking on our favorite spiky orange-haired man that is named after a strawberry. Well, his name means strawberry. Ichigo Kurosaki from Bleach. That is our second combatant for the new heroes. 10 people liked it, 49 votes were cast for this one. I know, right? And we have five comments. I believe, yeah, I believe two of them were involved in replying to one of these comments. So we're going to start from the top and work our way down. So Jesse said, didn't he destroy the moon? And if he wanted to, he can destroy the Earth. So yeah, I like Ichigo, but he's dead. 
that was a mouse that had the same treatment done on it. And that's how the moon was destroyed. So no, Cordell Sensei did not blow up the moon. That was one of the biggest lies in that show. <laughs> that he destroyed the moon, which was biggest lie ever that he blew up the moon. And the, even the Secret Service went along with it saying, this is the creature that blew up the moon. No, he didn't. <laughs> he didn't blow up the moon. He was on Earth the entire time. <laughs> but it didn't work. Anything. Exactly. They could care less about graduating. They just wanted that cash. And that is a lot of money, too. And then... Mm -hmm. Then we have... Furud. Rika. The strongest. Said... Mismatch. Ichigo blitz in one shot the verse. Hmm. I don't know what the saying that was, but... Maybe... Maybe she's siding with Koro Sensei or with Ichigo. I'm... I think I might be misinterpreting what she said, but I don't know. Then hi, very true. That man has a lot of forms, <laughs> a lot. Then I Devas mentioned. Don't know. Ichigo can physically harm Koro Sensei unless. He has that pink stuff, and Koro probably wouldn't be able to see Ichigo, so he has, so he, so he'd have to sense him instead. So when you think about it, Ichigo is a soul reaper, which is a form of like a Shinigami. So, yeah, yeah, Shikigami, Shinigami, and. Yeah, true. Koro Sensei would have to try to sense Ichigo. But again, also Koro Sensei cannot be harmed unless he's got special grade military weapons against him. Because that was shown throughout the series in Assassination Classroom. The kids had like. Very true. He may look like a dummy, but he's not a dummy. Yeah. I know. <laughs> he ditches. Yeah, he ditches and doesn't even go to class, but manages to pass. How? I know, right? Only in the anime world, man, where you can ditch class and get straight A's. But two people replied to her comment. Uh, Bardi Tech said, Bruh, Ichigo, a soul reaper. They can damage souls. <laughs> That's true. They can damage souls. Uh huh. But then Magician replied to Bardi Tech saying, Not true. I think it was just replying to Heindelis' comment saying, Not true. Kuro can be damaged by normal things. That is true. No, he really can't. He can't be damaged by normal things. He's like some weird... He got experimented on while he was human and then turned into this weird-looking octopus that can literally change color. see who won this little showdown between Soul Reaper and Super Teacher. <laughs> mm, I don't know. 
but our boy Ichigo, 42.9. Wow, Koro Sensei, 57.1. Yeah, a little bit, but the Super Octopus and Crazy fan, well, fan of uh, girl magazines. I think you know what magazines are talking about, Char, because I've seen the series and I know what type of magazines that Octopus Freak reads. <laughs> He's a fan of those magazines. You know, like, like, play, yeah, like Playboy magazines. Yeah, Playboy magazines. <laughs> I'll put it that way. Yeah. Yeah. Mm hmm. Yep. So, we got our quarterfinal. Oh, not quarterfinal. Well, yeah, quarterfinals. So, in the first half, we have. Natsu taking on Koro Sensei. Wow, that should be a good one. A Dragon Slayer taking on an octopus that can go Mach 10. How will that fare? Oh, wait, yeah, he can't go Mach 20. It's been a while since I've watched the series. I gotta watch it again for a refresher. Uh, alrighty. You watched it twice? I think I've watched Oron High School Host Club at least maybe three times. Three or five times. Watched it three times. I thought it was funny. <laughs> but your, his portrayal of Tamaki wasn't doing it for you? <laughs> yeah, everyone's a critic. Now! On to our double M battle, our M and M battle. <laughs> not, not the rapper, the candy. <laughs> I'm talking about Mob taking on Meliolis from the Seven Deadly Sins. We got Mob Psycho 100 and the Seven Deadly Sins main characters going at it. Eight people liked it. Thirty-nine votes were cast for this poll, and three comments. Magician again makes his presence felt, saying, Melly. I know, right? Next time, instead, we'll do for our next battle, we should do old versus new female heroes. Yeah, we gotta get the ladies in there. We gotta bring back Yorimichi because she's won two of our female battles before. We have to bring back the reigning champion! Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so much for that one! Yeah, bye-bye! <laughs> so, Magician commented saying, Meliodas nags. So, I guess he's either for Meliodas or against him. I don't know what's with the nags part. Um, and Dallas wrote, Mob doesn't stand a chance against Meliodas. Well, well, when, well, when you think about it, Meliodas is actually a demon. He's a demon. He's got four hearts, and he's literally lived out like entire lifetimes. And he's like, what, 300 plus years old? And still packs like a major punch. He's faced Bond before. Bond, a guy who can't die and is his right hand. And he still goes on. And he's got the body of like, what, a 12-year-old? <laughs> Very true. And then we got a new one. Miller Evans wrote... Meliodas stops. So clearly someone's with Meliodas. <laughs> Alright. I already know you're not going to be happy about this, but I'm going to read it anyway. Mob. Oh no, who, who they think is, would win in a fight? 
who, you know what, if we had a, if we had a chance to collaborate with the guys from Death Battle, oh man, we would give them some really good fights. Yeah. <laughs> that'd be fun. And seeing your characters literally interacting with them, oh my gosh, that'd be great. I'd be doing a lot of slapstick with boomstick. That'd be hilarious. <laughs> Are you staring at your dog again? <laughs> you gonna go like, Mom, well, what to do with? <laughs> So let's see. Mob had 30.8. <laughs> what did you do? You're like, nope. <laughs> like, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> so Mob had 30.8. Well, Meliodas. 969.2 You bark at me, I bark back! <laughs> yeah, I'm having a combo with the dog while I'm doing this. So this is fun. <laughs> so Melly Otis moves. I know, which is funny. <laughs> Oh my gosh. So Melly Otis moves on, but who will he face? Who will be his opponent between these two powerhouses that we have left on the old hero side? And I'm talking about Mr. Jotaro Kujo, voiced by the ever lovely Troy Baker, who is taking on Aaron Yeager from Attack on Titan. You got a stand user versus an actual titan. Yeah, Jojo Rokujo. It is? It isn't? Who is the voice by? Oh, I don't know why I was thinking Troy Baker. I'm thinking Troy Baker from Fulminago's Brotherhood when he voiced um, Green. Yeah. We got Troy Baker. But okay. Yeah. Yep, we got a stand user taking on a titan. Oh, man. Let's see. So, 10 people liked it. 40 votes were cast for this thing. That's a lot. And then we got... Mm -hmm. Then we got three comments. Jotaro by... Uh, this comment was by Maku Zakai. I think it was, I hope I'm saying that right. Yeah. Masukai, um, said, Jotaro's Star Platinum can smash diamonds with ease. Burning doesn't mean anything. So, Aaron does have a hardening ability. So, you know, then, Clancy wrote, either that's supposed to be Clancy or Quincy, but no, it's not Quincy. Quincy's with a Q, not a C. Um, Clancy commented saying, Star Platinum can solo the Attack on Titan universe. <laughs> so he's saying that Star, if Jotaro entered into the Attack on Titan universe with Star Platinum, he would level everybody. Every Titan. That's all. Mm-hmm. Very true. Yeah. Very true. Mm-hmm.
I was <laughs> I don't know why I'm thinking about this. I'm thinking about Star Platinum taking on Rhino from Attack on Titan because he is the Shield Titan. He's the Armor Titan. I would love to see that match go down. Death Battle, if you don't get on it, we gave you the idea. Jotaro Kujo taking on Rhino from Attack on Titan. Do it. Aww. Wait, they did do one. They, well, I don't know how long ago it was, but I saw one, this one YouTube couple react to death battle between Sanji from One Piece taking on Rock Lee from Naruto. So I think they're still doing it. So I think death battle's still, still ongoing. I just don't, uh... Rooster Teeth. Yeah, but they broke away from them, and they still have, they still, that was their idea that they came up with. Mm -hmm. But we'll have, we'll, we'll check later after, after we're done here, all these objects, and then I'll let you know, uh, next week, if they're still doing it. If they are, then I still want my idea to come to fruition. <laughs> hey, I want to see it on Death Battle. I want to see them combine all the stats between Jotaro Kujo and Rhino from Attack on Titan. I want to see that. Very true. They haven't put Aaron in a battle yet, so... <laughs> you never know, really. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it <laughs> and the rest was history. There you go. Um, and then Honey Dipper said, If a man can punch through diamond, a meat bag wouldn't do justice either. Uh, yeah. Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> so, Mr. Aaron Yeager at 42.5. Wow. Jotaro Kujo, 57.5. Of course, the Jojo moves on. I, I think it was... I'm trying to... I think we used... It was either Joseph or, like, younger Joseph. Joseph or Jonathan. But I believe it was Joe. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 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 No. Again, we didn't know that then, so... They're gone. They're history. Bye-bye. <laughs> mm-hmm. So, this battle that I have is still going on. There's one hour left to vote on this, guys. So take advantage of that one hour. But we're going to read the results that are already there. So, this is between Baki from Baki the Grappler... Taking on Kenshiro from Fist of the North Star. 
A lot of you probably don't know that one, but you do know Baki, the grappler from the Netflix original series. And this is the voice that Troy Baker did. He did Baki. Eleven people. No, not the newer one. Uh -huh. He did the he did the revamping of of Baki the Grappler, not the older version. Um, but 28 votes are have been cast so far. Well, this poll still has one hour left remaining, but we're gonna go with the results. There, there was a comment, but I think they took it down because it was something inappropriate. So, here are the results that are here so far. Oh my goodness. I don't know. I don't know. People are weird sometimes. Baki got 32.1. Yeah. I kid you not. And then Kenshiro, 67.9! I thought Baki would move on! Oh my gosh! I thought Baki would be the one to move on! But I guess not! Yeah, I would have loved to come. I know! Man, what a letdown! Eh, but what can you do? These are what, that's what the people voted for. I guess more people know about this than... <laughs> oh my gosh! I really wanted to see Jotaro facing Baki! I, w I wanted to see Jotaro face Baki in the finals if, that, if he even got far enough. But, Kenshiro moved on! Oh man, wow, that was a shocker! Okay, next we got everybody's favorite half demon Inuyasha taking on Akira from the Netflix original series Devil Man Crybaby. That is the the version of the Devil Man that we are using. So that is the one that we were going for. So we had seven comments on this one. Eleven people liked it, and 31 votes were cast in total for this poll. So, there was a lot of buzz, so it was a lot of conversation going on. So, uh, Bar D Tech started it off saying, you like your stomps, don't you? It's saying, then someone replied to him, it was... Rezex, the strongest, says, Who doesn't stop? Does my boy Iuyasha die? Oh my gosh. <laughs> then, of course, Bardi Tech replied, Yeah, Devilman would blitz and one shot him. That means one shot kill. Man. They went back and forth on this and saying, How strong is Devilman? I just know. He has some hex. I don't get it. And then just more bantering back and forth. That's how long this conversation went. That's where the seven comments came from. They were arguing back and forth about the top of that crybaby taking on Ina Yasha. Oh my gosh. And they did. <laughs> okay, here are the poll numbers. Ina Yasha, 38.7. Well, Akira, 61.3. Dang, the half demon is gone. <laughs> I know, man. Because, darn right it is. But I'm not going to do it because my grandma's in the other room. <laughs> I don't want to do that. Then she burns in and starts beating me up while the camera's on. <laughs> Don't need that to happen. <laughs> okay. Our next battle is between someone that can literally see ghosts and battle them. And also he's dead. 
while taking on an innocent boy that got went on his first date and eventually gets eaten alive. Well, gets a bite taken out of him literally and he turned into a freaking powerhouse. No one has a goal. We're talking about Yusuke from Yu Yu Hakusho taking on Genki Ken or Ken Kan Genki Kenki Kanaki Kanaki. There we go. <laughs> ah, gosh, my Japanese is awful. <laughs> I'm studying ja I'm I'm studying Japanese, I'm studying Korean. Those languages are hard. <laughs> They're very hard. They are hard. I know you did. But I'm still learning nevertheless. I didn't take any Japanese. Dear God, that's a lot. Cool. What? Oh my God. Even the character is that young. Jesus Christ. ABCs? <laughs> yeah, but they have more alphabetical letters than we do. Oh my god. Oh, Ooh, my brain would hurt. <laughs> <laughs> my, I think it would. I think it just might. <laughs> okay. Yeah, trying to make one word with all of those characters. It's a lot. Mm -hmm. Okay, but back to the battle now. No more academic lessons. <laughs> so we have... There were 35 votes cast for this poll. 10 people liked it. Do we have any comments? Yes, one! All right, so Handela has graced us with her presence again, saying Kanaki isn't winning that by a long shot. You guys truly overestimate Yusuke if you think otherwise. So she was, yes, yeah, she was backing up Yusuke, but I don't. I think her plea fell on Death Eaters. And you want to know why? Because Yusuke got 37.1. Of course. And of course, Ken Kanaki, the Google moves on with 62.9% of the votes. Yes. I'll just put Ken. Hmm. I don't know. I don't. I don't know. But again, this is anime. Rules usually don't apply when it comes to battles sometimes. Alright, our last one. Everybody's favorite powerhouse little pipsqueak. Edward Elric from Full Metal Alchemist and Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. Taking on Tenzo from Akira. 12 people liked it. 25 votes were cast. And no comments. Pulley. But I'm at least happy with this one. So, Tenzo, 40%. Our little shrimp pimp squeak half pint, whatever short name you can call him, strawberry shortcake, white on. Got 60% of the votes. So Edward Elric moves on. Mm -hmm. But when you think about it, I did see the gifs for Tenzo. Yeah, his transformations are disgusting. 
literally like deforms his entire body and it's just ew. But when you Yeah, I know, but it's just very, very gross. But when you think about it, it wasn't really the popular vote because Ed has really he's got combat experience and he can literally make anything any weapon with alchemy exactly yeah you can't make that yes because it cost him an arm and a leg yeah pretty much that so here are our combatants for the quarter finals. We have Goro Sensei taking on Natsu Dragnail and Meliodas taking on Jotaro Kujo for the old heroes. And then for the newer heroes, we have Kenshiro taking on the Devilman Crybaby himself, Akira. And then we have the ghoul taking on the alchemist. Ken Tanaki taking on Edward Elric. Ooh, I like these already. And then, of course, for our next battle, after we determine the boys' winner, we are going to be showing off the ladies. And, of course, Miss Yorobichi from Bleach will be defending her title as... Will she go for a triple crown, or will someone dethrone the queen? Who will dethrone Queen Yorichi? We will have to see! We don't know that yet, but again, she's still up. She's undefeated right now! She's got two wins! She's the only one that, with the battles that we have done, she is the only anime character that has won two battles, two straight. The all fe- oh, yeah. Yeah. It was- it was female heroes versus villains, and then the all, like, all-powerful females, the strongest females from each series. She won both of those. Hands down. But we will have to see who will dethrone the queen, because she's won twice. She's got double- she's got double status. But again, Yoruichi, will she go for her triple crown when we do the females? We won't know. But we already know Yoruichi is going to be on that female list because she has to defend her title. So, that, yeah, that will be for the females. So, this is our board standing now. Uh-uh. And then the polls will be going up later today, as always. Did we cover everything? Before we say sayonara? Alright! And make sure you check... Mm-hmm. Share it, and also check out all of our previous voice actor interviews and some of our older shows, because we have done this for a long, long time, and we enjoyed every second of it, and especially, <laughs> no, yeah, we gotta keep it going, we gotta keep it going, and we enjoyed doing the voice actor interviews that we have done. We really enjoyed it. From our very first one, we struggled, but we got through it, and we learned as we went, and we perfected it so, so much, and we are still working on more voice actor interviews since a lot of voice actors are kind of just stuck at home or recording from home, and we want to reach out to them to 
chat with them about their careers and maybe some upcoming projects that they are working on. If they are willing to share, would be nice. And, oh yeah, that is definitely a big baby because some of voice actors are sworn to secrecy because they can't give away too much. Very true. But again, we we don't know what goes on outside of their lives, and they don't know what what we do outside of their lives. They are people too. Treat them as such. That go that just doesn't go for voice actors. It goes for all celebrities, whether they're movie stars, professional trainers, singers, actors, actresses. You gotta treat them like people. Exactly. Um, but yeah, we are gonna let all of you guys go. Go, go. <laughs> um, we are gonna let you guys go, and we will see you guys next Sunday. But you will see Shar literally throughout the entire Monday through Friday, well, Monday through Saturday, actually. And then you'll see both of us on Sunday. So we will see you guys then. Bye-bye!